never stops working. Let's play that on the pedal just real soft. Please just that even when we don't feel it.
And you know what? He's arranged it in such a way that we have to give him praise. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, Amen. Thank you. We have to give him praise on this day. Yes. And every day that follows, we yes. have to worship Amen. the Lord because Amen. he is worthy of all of our praise. Yes, Amen. He is. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Um, spoke to you in part one about starting our day the biblical way. That's what we want to do. We want to start every single day in a way that's God-honoring, God-glorifying, that lifts up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we've been studying various people and topics and what we should do. The first time I was with you, we talked about many individuals who start their mornings, 5.30, 6.30 in the morning. They rise up and they do all these things. And the, the factor that they left out of their lives was the Lord. The very God who created the day. The very God who right. composed the day. The very God who controls the day. The very God who takes care of you every single day. Did you know that? Yes. Your God takes care of you every single yes, moment of Never. your life. Yes. That's yes. Even when we don't realize that he's working. Yes. <laughs> yes. Even when we don't know it, he's working. Yes, he is. Jesus said, my father works until now, and I am working. Yes. And if the spirit of Christ is inside of you, guess what? God is still working. Amen. Yes. Amen. He's still very much alive. And we need to remember the Lord and praise him for every single day that we have, because every single day is a gift from God. Number two, we talked about rising early and starting our day with prayer. Part three, we said, read your Bible every morning and practice what it conveys. Last week, we talked about redeem the time and plan your day. All of these are so very important. And today, I want to talk about you raising a praise. To start your day. Amen. Raise a praise Amen. and watch God Amen. make a way. Can you stand with me, please? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are absolutely immersed in your goodness and in your love and in your compassions, Lord. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. Father, I don't care what's happening in this world. We care, but you know what I mean, Father, in my heart. It's, it's all about you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love you, and we love you because you first loved us. Yeah, yeah. Even the thought of that, Father, just overwhelms us that we could be loved so much by you, Lord God, that you would leave heaven, leave perfection, leave glory, leave angelic hosts praising you 24-7 and come down to this filthy earth, Lord God, to be with us. And you did because you loved us so much. And oh, we come down, the Lord, you condescended to our level. And then you had a plan to go to a cross, to bear our sins, and to be the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Lord God, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for what you did. Thank you that you shed your precious, innocent blood on that cross. You died in our place. It should have been us that took the wrath of the Father in heaven, but Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, you are the Lamb. You are the Lamb that was sacrificed for our sins, and not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. You brought redemption, Master. You transformed us, Lord, and took us out of the kingdom of darkness and planted us into the kingdom of your dear Son. Lord, you changed our names. You made us a new creature in Christ Jesus. Now your Spirit is indwelling us, and we are new. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Redeemed. Redeemed. Regenerated by your Holy Spirit. Regenerated by your Holy Spirit. Made new by your Holy Spirit. God, 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 we thank you. So, so much. And we can't wait for that shofar to blow. The dead in Christ shall rise first and bring to our life. Every name shall be called together with them. Forever we shall be with you, Lord God. We cannot wait for the shofar to blow, Lord God. Thank you that you're coming back. Thank you that you're coming back for your bride. Yes, you are. Lord, help us to walk faithfully, Lord. God. Help yes, us to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Hallelujah. God, bless this word. Let this word enrich. Let this word dwell richly within your people. Let it come alive, Father God. Let the word of Christ go forth and have free course and be glorified. Holy Spirit, we need you. Yes, we do. 
Lord, Lord, we need you. Plant this word in our hearts and water it, Lord God. Water it, Lord God, so that it produces 30, 60, and 100 fold. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and Lord, and all God's people said amen. We need to stand for one second, please. We need vocalists. We need a vocalist who knows how to sing happy birthday to Brother Joe, who's going to be uh, 19, 29, 39, 40, 59, keep going, 69, keep going, he's got, keep going like 79, 89, 90. Most mornings, 
The Holy Spirit wakes me up, and there's a song already resonating inside of my Amen. spirit. And when I wake up, I just begin to sing Amen. the song Amen. back unto the Lord. But it's Amen. the Holy Spirit inside of us. That's one of the things that we have that God has gifted us with. When we know that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter 5, Be filled with the Spirit. Well, how do you know? Singing songs and hymns unto the Lord, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Amen. That's one of the signs of the Spirit being inside of you and being filled with the Holy Spirit. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, you know all the psalms that were written by him, Psalm 1 all the way through, possibly not 90, but uh, 91. But he woke up with a song every single morning. Amen. He said, as for me, I will sing about your power Amen. each morning. Turn to somebody and say, each morning. Each morning. Each morning, each morning I will sing. With joy about your unfailing love. Amen. Each morning, I arise, David says. This would be a good practice for us to start doing. You know, with everything else that I told you about, one of the wonderful things, and listen, all the things that I've suggested, you don't have to do all of them in the morning, but I'm just praying that one of these things grabs hold in your soul and you'll begin to do this practice the biblical way of rising each day. Amen. So why is a morning song so important. Why is it so important to praise God? I want to share a few things regarding the explosive power of praise. Amen. Andrew Warnock said, praise, oh, praise isn't like the caboose that just follows what happens, but it's more like the engine of a train that makes things happen. Amen. Can I just say that again? Yeah, yeah. Praise isn't like a caboose, the last car of a train. That just follows what happens, but it is more like the engine of a train that makes things happen. And I don't know about you, I don't know if you're putting the coal of praise into your heart of um, getting it on fire so that you can wake up every morning and begin to glorify God. But let me tell you something, now more than ever, can I say it again now, more than ever, you and I need to praise the King of Kings who is on the throne. Not a man, not a dictator, not people. We don't make our boast for the man. Our boast is in the Lord, and Him we will boast all the day long. If you've got your eyes on a man, you've got it on the wrong man. You need to refocus on the man. Amen. On the leader, Amen. the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. Keep your eyes, young people, off of people. Amen. Keep it on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't idolize people. Don't have a star and idolize that person. Because let me tell you something, they will fail you. Yes. Christ Jesus will never, ever fail Ever fail you. That's why it's so important to praise Him and praise Him alone. That's why when you wake up, you don't turn on the TV, you don't go to your email, you don't go to Twitter, you don't go to anything else but the Lord Jesus Christ. Take some time, get in His presence, and praise Him. Amen? Just begin to worship Him. Why? Because praise, number one, is glory appealing. Worship attracts the presence of God. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't know about you, but when we began to worship here, I'm so thankful for the worship team. Me you too. Amen. Amen. It says in 2 Chronicles, 
In chapter 5, verses 12 through 14, all the Levite singers, yes. somebody say singers. Singers. Asaph, Hebrew, and Jephthah, their sons and their relatives, dressed in fine linen with cymbals, harps, and lyres, were standing at the east end of the altar, and with them 120 Konahim, priests blowing trumpets. Then it came to pass that when the trumpeters and singers joined as one, joined as one, joined as one, when they came together as one, okay, to extol and praise Adonai the Lord, and when the sound of the trumpets, the cymbals, the musical instruments, and the praise of Adonai, they were singing a short little song, for he is good, and his mercies endure forever. He is good, he is good, and his mercies Somebody say, praise. 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 Somebody say, it's high 
in a chamber. It was earthquaking. It was chain breaking. It was soul saving. Amen. Grace intervening. Amen. Amen. God is going to intervene in your lives today. I don't know Hallelujah. if you know this, but you're going through some stuff right now. And right now, God has dropped a word inside of you that is going to break the chains of what you are going through. The habits that you have right now are going to be broken in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. In Amen. Jesus' name that you are going to be released. You know why? Because now you're going to begin to praise God or not. You're going to praise your God in heaven, the one who is able to. In his presence there is fullness of joy. Oh, yeah. God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. Amen. This is what it, stop asking, start adoring. Amen. Listen, it's transformed my life. Before any of this stuff went down, oh, God already had me on a path to say, don't worry about that stuff. I know it. Amen. Amen. You just God keep your good. eyes focused on me. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord. 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 Listen, you don't need to go to a bar. No. You don't need drugs. No, I know marijuana is legal in New Jersey now, yeah. but you don't need it. You can get high with Jesus. Yeah. You can get drunk in the Holy Ghost. You can spend enough time in the presence of God, and you don't need anything because you'll wobble in the presence of Jesus Christ, and He'll help you stand up and straight when you need it. Said, or those that were baptized in the Holy Spirit on the day, but oh man, I hope you get baptized in the Holy oh, Spirit. Yes, yes. These are not drunk as you suppose. Oh, get the scene? Yes, wow. These are not, but well, this is that which was spoken by the prophet John. In the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all of them. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. No, I'm not. There was a part of me that wanted to stop praising God. How can I praise a God who refused to intervene to save this precious life? But she didn't give up. She stayed in the Word of God, especially in Psalms. The Psalms of David. She began to read and read through the Psalms. She said, I recall all that God had brought me through. Praise the Lord. I have recollected how many times he's carried me when I felt too weak to go on, both in this tragedy and mid calamities in the past, praise the Lord. She says, I still go through the valley of grief, yet my heart echoes what David said in Psalm 43, verse 5. For I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Are you going through some hardship right now? Are you going through a calamity in your life? Is there grief maybe that's overwhelming? Are you saddened? You know what God says? That he will put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garments of praise for when you're down and you can feel relief even in your sadness. God will break it free. Jesus said in the game to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He will clothe you, child of God, if you will allow him to do. For I will yet praise him. If you have that kind of attitude, believe me, garments are going to come down from heaven, wrap themselves around you, lift you up, and Lord God is going to give you some joy inside of you. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. If you're going through heartache, if you're going through depression, if you can't break out of this, you and I need to get into the 
the presence of God. Put up some worship music. Just stay there. If it takes 10 minutes, 20 minutes, a half hour, an hour, stay there. And you will feel the glory of God come down and baptize you in your soul. Refresh your soul.
out his sword and went, shoot! So long, buddy. Nice to know you. Here you go, Philistines! And my sword threw on. Of course, Saul is enamored with this young man. He says, come on, you're part of the army now. He puts David in charge of the army. David starts going out there, he's doing battles, and the Bible says over and over again, he kept succeeding, kept succeeding, growing more in success, more in success, to the point that Saul became afraid of David. Wow. Then one day, David was coming back, and a song emerged, and it said, Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. <laughs> that reverberated in Saul's heart. Uh-oh, my position is not going to be here very long. Uh, somebody's going to take my place. And it says from that moment on, an evil spirit came upon Saul. Because Saul had an evil eye against David. Yeah. Yeah. And from that moment on, he wanted to kill the very man who brought Israel to its place. Yeah. And he was making attempts. He was doing it secretly without even letting his son Jonathan know all about this. And finally, David had to leave. David and Jonathan got together. David said to Jonathan, listen, your dad wants to kill me. No, it can't be. Yes, your dad wants to kill me. Long story short again. Sorry. David flees from Israel. He's supposed to be the next king. His home is supposed to be in a castle. But you know what the Bible says? As he's fleeing. David let Gath and escape to the cave of Adullam. Somebody say cave. The cave. Here's a man who was anointed, who was supposed to be in a castle, and he is in a cave. Ever feel like that? Yeah. Ever feel like I'm a child of God and I should be enjoying all the riches and the blessings of God, but I'm in the darkness right now. I'm in a cave experience right now. I don't get it, God. How is it that you told me to do this specific thing, but it's not happening? Why, God? Why, 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 why? Stop complaining. Start praising. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He was in the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and all other relatives joined him there. Then others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt, who were just discontented until David was captain over about 400 people. I love this story because you know what? David's still in charge, and God is still putting him in charge of even 400 people when he's in a cave. But he's in this cave, and he's there. And some estimate possibly 10 years? 10 years? I sometimes envision David coming out of this cave and standing, looking out and saying, oh, over there, that's why, that's why I killed that Goliath guy. Over there, that's why I, I got the Philistine armies. And over there, that's where that battle happened. I was working for Israel. We were doing good. Now I'm in this cave. 10 years. How many of you have been in the cave? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> I'm in the, I'm in the Here, I'll raise my hand too. I'll raise both hands, I'll raise the feet. You know. Sometimes you have cave experiences and it's not pretty. It's depressing. You go into a cave and it's dark and it's gloomy. And there seems to be nothing at all that's happening. But I wanna, can I just share something with you? You can write a song in the cave. Did you know that? You can still praise God in the cave. As I was studying this so many years ago, I came across this passage. It was the heading, the heading of Psalm 57. And in the heading of Psalm 57, if you go there, I don't have it here, but in the, the heading of Psalm 57, it says it was a psalm that David wrote when he fleed from when he ran from Saul while he was in the cave. Right there at the heading of Psalm 57. A psalm that he wrote inside a cave. And what does this psalm say? Oh, he's depressing. Oh, God, why'd you put me here? Oh, Jesus, I'm so tired of journaling this. It's the same thing over and over and over again. I will hide beneath the shadow of your wings until the danger passes by. In other words, I'm going to trust you through this. I am surrounded by fierce lions who greatly devour human prey, whose teeth pierce spears and arrows, and whose tongues are like swords. He's being real about the situation that he's in. Verse 5, be exalted, O God, <laughs> above the heavens. May your glory be over all of the earth. Imagine in the cave, Lord, he's sitting there in the door. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. May your glory, may it fill all the earth. Woo! My enemies have 
set a trap for me. I am weary from distress. Verse 7, my heart is confident in you. Oh my God, my heart is confident. No wonder, listen, I can sing your praises. I can sing your praises inside the cave. I'm composing a song inside the cave. Yes, I'm supposed to be in, in the castle, but I'm in the cave. And you know what? You are still sovereign over all. You are still in control of my life. I am going to wait on you to see. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to praise you. And I'm going to glorify you. I am going to worship you. I am going to sing hallelujahs. I am going to raise a praise every single morning. I am going to talk about your faithfulness. I am going to shout from the cross. not waver in his faith. And unfortunately now I see a lot of Christians wavering in their faith. Yes, yes. And they forgot who God is. Yes. That God is still in control. Yes. Be depressed, yes. be real, but glorify God. Amen. Glorify God in this time. Yes. Raise your hallelujah and say, you know what, Lord, I don't understand it. I don't understand what's going on, but still yet will I praise you. Amen. I will wake up the dawn, dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nation. Even the going, he didn't care. I'll sing it anywhere. Right. Thank you. For your unfailing love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. May your glory shine all over the earth. Are you in a cave? Are you going through a dark experience right now? Shout to God with the voice of triumph and give praise to him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me, surround me about with songs of deliverance. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You see, we need to be just as eager about our praise and have a passion for praise as Elaine did, as David did, as other people do when they find themselves in difficult times. Right now, we need to have an eager passion for praise. We can't stop. Listen to David. He says, I will praise you. It's a choice. I will praise you, O Lord. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. I will praise God's name in a song. I will sing praise to you. I will extol the Lord at all. Somebody say, at all times. At, even now. Somebody say, even now. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise the Lord even now. At all times. I will praise you with all of my heart. Not half-hearted. I'm coming to this with everything I have, Lord. Everything. I'm laying it all down. I will praise the Lord while I live. I will praise you among the nations, among the Goyim. Oh, I will praise the Lord not just today, not just tomorrow, throughout my life. I will make music to praise my God as long as I live. You wake up in the morning, in the morning, give me Jesus. In the afternoon, give me Jesus. Let me praise you in the evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Morning, afternoon, evening. Praise God. Praise God. Do not stop to praise the Lord. Please, Lord, help us to understand this. And we need to take advantage of that. Listen, we need to esteem our privilege to praise. Right now, I really believe that a lot of Christians are going to have to be making some decisions. And if they're going to want to praise the Lord with all their heart. We've seen it happen a couple times, right, already? Amen. Just within a pandemic. All of a sudden, California bands singing in church. Interesting. Why well, pick that one thing? Because the devil knows. The devil knows when the church becomes silent. And when we become silent. And when we don't praise the Lord. He can do a lot of things. But when you and I start to praise God. 
You see, that stops the devil in his tracks. It's demon fleeing as well. You begin to praise the Lord. There was a time when David would go to, to Saul because Saul was so demon possessed. And David would begin to play the harp. And you know what the Bible says? That as David was playing the harp, the anointing of God came down and it freed Saul yes, from the demons. Lord, the demons don't like it when you lose it. The demons don't like it when you shout to God. The demons don't like it when we get glory to God because they know that there's a breakthrough coming. They want to keep us in fear. They want to keep us in our dungeon. But even in the dungeon, how I will extol you, oh God. I will be exalted, oh God. Even in the place. Amen. Amen. I hope you leave this place shouting. I pray that you go down the street and you're screaming so loud that people next to you go, Woo! I like that. Where do you go to church? Hallelujah. Our church is dead. Where do you go? Hallelujah. Say, I go to King Jesus' church. Amen. If Jesus inside me, the offer and finish your heart, baby. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Keep singing. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. I love when people are driving in the car and I drive up next and they're blasting Christian music. Wow. Well, I come up next to the car and they're just shouting praises to God. I don't need to know. I know that they're going through something. And I said, leave them alone because praise God, they're going to have a breakthrough. Amen. Praise Him, yes. Churches were fine. Over fifty thousand dollars for singing. Wow! Fifty thousand dollars for singing because they went against the establishment. They went against the government. But you know what? All the cops in New Jersey can come here. And I'm going to shout praises to my God. Yeah. There was one pastor that got. Arrested 33 times for holding services. Maybe it's doing all the right thing. Mass and everything. But imagine $50,000 you're fine for singing. Think about this. There's a deeper spiritual element yes. here, and it's the devil. The devil does not want you to praise God. Right. Hallelujah. So we have to take advantage of that. That's true. The free exercise clause of the First Amendment gives you and me the right to worship or not, as you choose. The government cannot penalize you because of your religious beliefs. Amen. The free exercise clause of the First Amendment. Oh, yeah. yes. You have the right. Amen. And we need to thank God for this right that we have. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. There's so many other countries, so many of our brothers and sisters who are in countries right now, you know where they go? They meet in a cave because they can't meet in public for fear that they are going to be arrested. But they get in a cave, shoulder to shoulder, raising their hands and praising God. Hallelujah. Persecuted states, and you know what they're doing? They're still worshiping the Lord. Amen. Praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation, Francis Scott Key said. Hallelujah. Then conquer we must when our cause is just, and this be our motto. And God is our trust, and the star spangled banner and triumph shall wave over the land for the free and home of all love and love pray. We have such an esteem, a privilege to worship God. And you know what that means? That we should really take advantage and exercise of practice. Yes, Lord. I love seeing these little children in different countries, Chinese, Filipino, all these children, they understand. How is it, saints of God, that little children understand how to praise the Lord? The children shall lead them. Amen. This what we're going through right now is just a dress rehearsal for eternity. Yes. When you and I get to eternity, there is going to be one person and one person alone that we're going to look to. Amen. Revelation says, I saw the Lamb standing in the center. Can you say in the center? In the center. Near the throne with the four living creatures. Revelation 7, 17, John says, for the Lamb at the center of the throne. Can you say at the center? At the center. And what do you think people are doing as Jesus is taking center stage there in heaven? And I beheld, and I heard a voice of many angels round about the throne. Worship team, you can start to make your way up. And the beasts of the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy 
is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And you know what? It doesn't stop. They just keep saying, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard, I say blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and 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 forever blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him blessing glory and honor be unto him praise 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 to our God how can you stand up hallelujah Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody needs breakthrough in this place, and today you're going to get it because today you are going to release it into the presence of God. You're not going to complain anymore. You are just going to give it over to the Lord. Christ alone is the exclusive person of our praise. Why is praise so important? It is glory appealing, God revealing, it is grace intervening, it is grief transforming, it is bravo emancipating. Amen. Amen. Somebody said this. When you enter his presence with praise, God enters your circumstances with power. David said it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness when? In the morning. In the morning. And your faithfulness at night. I encourage you to raise your praise every single day that you get up. Just begin to worship God, begin to praise Him. Find some time alone to get alone with Him and just allow heaven to come down and fill your soul. Amen. Amen. And Father, we thank you so much. And Lord God, we believe that today you are emancipating people even from their problems, Lord God. That you are relieving people from their grief, Lord God. That you are intervening by your grace. And there's going to be an earth shaking, Lord God. There's going to be chain breaking. Lord God, there's going to be soul saving as a result of your grace coming in and intervening, Lord God. And we're giving you all the glory and the honor and praise. And Father, we know you stand here today knowing that you are God and we are not, that you are in control and you're working all things together for good to those that love you. Let me just say this to those that are here, maybe, or those listening. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that one day you will bow down. And you will confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Either in sincerity, you can do it now, or later on, the devil himself will have to bow down and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, we thank you that you are a vindicator. Lord, I ask you to touch hearts right now. For those that have never asked Jesus to be Lord in their lives, that they would do it right now. As a Philippian jailer, he said, what must I do? Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and trust your whole life over to him and you will be saved in Jesus' name. Now that I bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you, the Lord be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance on you, the Lord grant you shalom. Just spend a few moments right now, just begin.